I love this music. a moment to listen to this jam. Uh. Who's gonna love you, baby? Welcome back guys to Dream Daddy. I know it's been a while since I made a video. Well, not really. To me, it's been a while since I just recorded a lot of stuff. Let me check if everything's working again, guys. We are back. Trust no one. Sounds kind of... Did I just... Oh, did I crash? Nope. I pulled up to the carport and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Oh yeah, we just talked to Mr. Vegeta. And there's my handsome self looking super young. Mr. Vegeta and I actually got slipped about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about Mario Batoli the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we get some dinner? Sure thing. Let's go to the mall food court. Does that sound good to you? Oh yeah. We're gonna do a voice. Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can our dad take his daughter to the mall? Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. Sounds like a deal to me! We drive in silence for a short while, and Mena plays a, a game on a phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents, and that's okay because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have their parents' perspective because, you know, maybe the parents have dealt with similar situations. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say, it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Mm. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vegeta said you haven't been part participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Okay. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vegeta class. Huh. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I, Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. <sighs> ah, uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating! Uh, I heard MR is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's a... I don't think you get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Noah! Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to school? Hmm. Yep. Do you like Noah? Hey. What? No! Dad! Ah! I can't believe you would. Oh. Dad! I mean, jeez. Why would you? Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry. Just asking. She totally likes him. Dad! He's just my friend! Guys and girls can be friends! He's my friend! Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. I get it. You totally like him? Jeez! This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. To the mall, then! You're never too busy or important to be kind to allies, but trust nobody! We've heard at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple of different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Right. Hell yeah! Language, Missy. Uh -huh. Heck yeah! Better. Uh -huh. Huh? We push the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. What are you in the mood for? For bread dipped in sugar, bread with cheese on it? Or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? 
I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. Dude, this daughter's awesome. What are a giant pile of chips and a naturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager? You take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely delicious. We have to get through the pain. We enjoy the delicious cheesy goodness together until we are all out of nachos. So, huh. something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Oh no. Hmm. Sign, which meme? All, all memes? Uh. Amanda signs deeply places her head in her hands. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all of his use have already done the joke to death. Uh. And what's worse than that is that movies and teenage and TV and video games will try to jump in on a meme train just but just how based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out, so it just dates it and isn't funny. Oh shit, what up? Aww. Dad, please! Yeah. Anyway, changing the subject. Where are you now? Wanna go to that golf store? Mm. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to sell herself as an anti-establishment despite being an exact representation of the establishment. I don't know what story you're talking about. Hot topic? You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against and in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. Oh, that one! Hey! Hey! I remember the story of me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. There it is! You can still see the outline, kinda. I'm so proud. Speech! Amanda. Yeah. Speech! 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 I'll let her do it if you stop chanting! Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. <clears> Thank <throat> you all for joining us here today to commemorate in an historic moment that will forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Vaughn had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. After begging her father to take her to the dead goth and beyond, to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among her possessions. Thank you. Uh. Amanda's moved. She begins clapping. Slow at first, then faster and more vigorously summon all the pretenders to their hands when all the monsters start clapping and bow my head. Yes. Oh, hey, Chain Wallets! Yes! Where I'm in a business of looking at band t shirts, I try to find something to try and interest myself. Not much for a dad to look in Dead Gotham Beyond. Pursue the band t shirt, look at ironic mugs, or clear check the. Clear. I like ironic mugs. I suddenly stricken my existential fear. If there's only one number dead, then why are there so many no mugs that say that? This whole time I thought I was the only one. Ah, if I'm not number one, where do I place the global dead ranking charts? I have work to do. Look, this is very important to me. I have here a stifled argument over the cashier story. An old gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored looking cashier at pink hair. Who is this gent? What voice should we give this guy? Oh, I can see that. Don't know. No, no. I feel like we already have a voice for that. Uh, I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Listen, when I bought this on oh, listen, when I bought this online, the website said that this bus was Victorian inspired. However, when I saved it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. I see you. Well, it seems that I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by my post. Whatever, dude. The man warns Rams and storms out. His little coattail is trailing behind him. I, can, I can't tell if they're Victorian inspired or Edwardian in nature. The man tries up to me with a t-shirt in hand. Oh, boy, here it comes. Hey, Dad, I'm trying 5,000. Yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. And it plops a shoulder to the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. The cashier says nothing and rings a man up. Radiating hatred, I hand her a 20. 
So what does that guy's deal? Kesha roars her eyes so hard and worries her ball or something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with the Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands a man her bag and then close the conversation is over. We'll make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Wait, that was a chick? And then I sit on the couch trying to find trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh cool! Long call paranormal ice road ghost trucker's son. Your favorite, right? Oh hell yes. I have to make it over the Canadian channel before the ice road melts. <gasps> but also hunting ghost. Uh. Also the trucks are hunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint, Dogbone, the twin brother, truck driving, and ghost hunting duo find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no, the ghost done got control of the truck. I can't stare on them, their damn ice roads. Let me use the see if a meter to try to communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Ah, almost got it. If you miss it carefully, it sounds like they're saying, you're going to die. That's because we're about to die, you. This is art. The episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. I step a little longer, curious about the exploits of Calum and Flint Dogbone after the disastrous ice road accident after I crawl to bed and get a good night's sleep. Don't forget to floss every day. Sorry, my phone is blowing out because of text messages. <laughs> Money, sleepyhead! Five more minutes. You have never let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine! We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. The man is better at. Inter I can't read. Interpreting the tiny manuals, we were able to put together a few shelves on one desk, and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. So, you excited for the cookout today? Ah, oh, shit, I forgot that's today. Excited to beef, beef up my grilling skills. If there's food, I'm excited. I'm over those terrible store bought sugar cookies that aren't bringing to parties. Oh, yes, those are the best. I have an itch on my arm. Hmm. Yeah, those are, those are bad. They're not bad, which means there are more for me. Hmm. Don't you want to meet some more people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Yeah, sounds about right. Dad, you have beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely want to be late. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shops for a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda really quickly follows us. We're across the street to Joseph's house with a store bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if, if it doesn't involve a girl. Hmm. I'm actually a great cook if it doesn't involve a girl. I guess we're not as early as we thought. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people, and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Smoke trying to run through a sprinkler in a dark chats and smoke coasters. I set our veggie plate down on a table next to the two veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wait to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over. Arms open wide. Shit, what was his voice? What was it? Welcome, I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over. This is Chris, my oldest. Hey, that's me. Hi. This is Christian and Christy. They're twins. They start creepily and say nothing. I just want to fucking punt kick them. Sorry. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Wait, where's Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Y you're married? Hey. Just a picture on the cheek. She smiles. Uh, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Krish to bed? Hmm. I'll have I'll have to go look for him. Hmm. What? You'll have to. Just to take some money against his composure. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Vaughn and his daughter Amanda. Hmm. I shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Nice to meet you, Mary. I'm chimed, well. I'll have to go over there now. Ah, ha, ha. My wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. This is Robert. He lives just across the way. Who was... This is the guy we met at the cafe. The hot piece of... jacket. Hacker man nursing a glass of whiskey guys me up and down. 
don't, don't, what are you, what are you, are you looking at me? You, you checking out my shirt? Hey. Hey, I'm fine. It's nice to meet you. He takes a long swig of his drink. <clears throat> Charmed. Yeah. Vaughn and his daughter just moved. Oh, shit. <clears throat> Vaughn and his daughter just moved in next door. Cool. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> If you ever need recommendations on where to get a drink in this town, Rob's your man. I told you not to call me Rob. <laughs> right, got it. Rob Adams away without saying goodbye. He's not really a people person. I mean, I uh, mill around and try to, some, some, try to find some food spread out on the table. I picked up some Denver eggs. Man, who grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins to buy and land with big goods. Oh, uh, I gotta want to make friends. Come on, Dad! Who are you gonna party with when I go off to school? But I don't wanna have to do pleasantries. Hmm. Dad! Oh, we're gonna talk about weather! Go do it! Make a friend! But how could I possibly be on my own? He's jotted in such potion thanks to bad parenting! <laughs> this plate of cookies is my new, Dad. Bye. I managed to shove into the center of the yard where here goes nothing. I look around the party and I'm surprised he's really amazing! Is that barista for the coffee spin? What a cool guy and mysterious. Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? This is not the guy who's been throwing a fit in dead goth and beyond. This is not a man as teacher. I had no Craig. What up, Craig? Oh, wait a second, all these people live on a car sack? That can't be right, I better investigate. I don't wanna talk to Craig. Craig's my man. Oh god, I don't remember their voices. Oh shit, what was his voice? I don't remember his voice. Was it? Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're unique byproduct of the social and political climate of, t of a time and place and try to make something, try to take something like, say, the Rocco period and compare it to the postmodernism in America. You're completely disregarding the, con the context in which a work of art is created. I'm gonna hear you seem busy talking that they don't notice me. Create links in. Then. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening. Dr. Craig. I turn my attention. I like Craig. I think Tra Craig's my favorite. I mean, look at the baby as well! Ah! I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. I had resistance training go the other day. Great! Little River here is a great cheerleader, aren't you, Tandy Burrow? Craig grabs River arms and raises him around. Oh. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for pooping on you. She must be a handful at that age. Oh, there I was, are. But it's so worth it, hey! Craig grabs her arms again and waves them around. Oh. Uh, so I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. Ah, uh, you're so in. There's still a few hours in his to care of before I can really call myself set or dead. But I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. We did livable throughout the entirety of college. Yeah, my goal is for Amanda to live the sort of life that didn't involve eating spoons for ranch dressing in a pellet cleanser, be sure. Between two, between different types of pizza. Still does though. Hey, she takes after her dad. Vaughn, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little tiny flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize drugs hey. over to us. What is it, sweetheart? That's a flower crown. It, 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 it's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Hey, dude. <laughs> hey, dude. There's only one way to find out. I'm gonna take the flower crown and place it on top of his head. Hey. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him. Think you get over it. No, but but you're slightly less cool than you were before you put it on. Hey, hey, Vaughn, this is my daughter. Hello. Wait, what am I doing? Hi, hi, fuck. I'm coming, Misty. What kind of name is that? A minute comes over Daisy and tell. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. 
Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and uh, your teacher. Oh, hi, Mr. Vegeta. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Oh, <laughs> oh yep. You still gonna get me that overdue term Aww. paper? Haha, <laughs> great saying you! I meant a finger guns her <laughs> way out of conversation like a champ. She learned finger guns me for me. I'm very Aww. proud. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Whoa. Nico looks around the party. Whoa! He must finally spot him because his eyes open wide. Sweet Manchego! Ernest, Ernest Highway High Himing Wave Vegeta, are you smoking? Uh. I just spit on my keyboard. Ernest is hurting a lit cigarette. Nah. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag out of his cigarette, then flicks into the gutter. Hmm. Unbelievable. Excuse me. He can march over to Ernest, and I turn my attention to Matt and Greg. Kids, right? Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph Paints, and they burned down half the yard. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread onto my lawn and burned down half of my yard, too. I don't know. Hugo walks over to us. Oh, God. Practically dragging Ernest um. behind him. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Vaughn, this is my son, Ernest. Hello? Ernest looks away, sulking. His hands shoved deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him patiently. Hey... Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Mm -hmm. Ernest! Okay, okay, I'm in 8th grade. God, are you happy now? She was just dying to know. Er, yeah, good for you. Hmm. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes, blaming my generation for family, they ain't calling me. God, ouch. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Ernest! Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. He just puts earbuds and stands out and stands the corner. Well, that was... That was certainly something. He seems nice. He could put his head in his hands and signs. Uh, I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. God, my phone's blowing up. As much as I want to be... As much as I want to be a cool dad, I have to be there third than dad, and he clearly resents me for it. I mean, I think as a dad and teacher, there's uh, about as an authority... Authority... Tian... As you can get. Hmm. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. Oh. See that right there? You can't say that. Oh. <laughs> My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? I uh, don't know. I think we just did accept the fate as dads that we become the machine we once raged against and accept our fate. To ironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think well, you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, they're, you're doomed. I'm in his 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. Oh. This is much do y'all want it. I don't think it was... Ah, my phone. I need you. I need you. have my timer. Come back to me, please. We can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me in earnest. Our job is parents to make sure kids turn out okay. Yeah, you're right, but it'd be nice to have it both ways. Yeah, those guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might just come a tree where we'll be like that in college with an almond. <laughs> Don't let us eat up your time, Vaughn. Go, go meet some other people around the neighborhood. I like you guys. Suck to these two. I glance out of the yard and notice Robin and Brian chewing, chatting over drinks. Man, I don't think I want to deal with being one upped by Brian. Whatever, whatever happened with Robert last night. Sorry, my voice is extremely dry. If I'm doing all these voices, I think I read that. Oh no, they got me staring. Oh no, Brian's waving me over. Shoot! I flashed his mind. Welcome to them. Hey guys. Uh. What was his voice? What, what was his voice? Vaughn, how the how the heck are you? Settling into the neighbor. Settle. What's up? Or was it like a? Uh, how the heck are you? Settling into the neighbor. I don't know what his voice was. Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order at least. <laughs> That's great to hear. 
<laughs> I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally get the 50s in there. 50 in there. The game looks great and high def. Oh boy. Hmm. Oh, and have you met your Robert yet? <laughs> yeah, we met. Robert regards me over his whiskey. Good seeing you again. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about my most, most recent camping trip. Spent a night out in the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. Even caught her first fish. It's good to see you taking your daughter out like that. I bet she loved it. It's good that she loves the outdoors. Mine loves being inside. Brian raised an eyebrow at me. Being inside. Making art. She won a local competition for that. Yep. Did I put it on too strongly? Robert stares at me blankly for a second. Anyway. I haven't gone camping in years. Not since the last time. Same here. Well, things change when you have kid. Wait. What happened the last time? Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Well, old Johnny boy and me were out in the back country. Johnny's boy is a strong kid. Met him in days. Comes from Kansas. They bet him tougher out there anyway. Things go south pretty quick. Johnny boy breaks an ankle when the rope reach snaps. Well. You can see the bone popping out through the skin. Johnny boy screaming now, crying for his mama, losing blood. We're two days out from the living soul, and here I am with my dear friend bleeding out in front of me. I'm going to dress the room, but I got a fireman carry a six foot, 180 pound man over the toughest terrain I've ever been in. Oh, a lot here. There were moments during those two days when I bought out about leaving old Johnny boy, but you better bond with your brothers in arms. And that bond never breaks. I got the boy back to civilization, but I lost some of me out there. I guess I'll scare it for you. Brad and I stare in belief. Robert takes another long sip of whiskey. Hey. Oh, I'm just kidding. My fr friend John and I went tubing down a river and he lost a flip flop. Missed that kid. <laughs> Brad and I laugh nervously. Or mm -hmm. am I kidding? Brad and I tense up again. <sighs> oh, I'm kidding. Phil. Yeah. The man and Daisy bear up to us, laughing. Daisy's holding a paper plate in front of her like a stangway. We well, gotta get off this auto truck! Oh no, the ghost locked the doors! Quick! Hit the emergency escape button! But the truck's still have emergency escape buttons! Ah, uh, then hit the brake, I guess. And then we'll get out of the truck. The imaginary truck. Anyway, we're safe from the ghosts. But how are we ever survive this auto truck, Daisy? You won't have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although I'm not sure I have the material to guide you properly cook you. You know, that reminds me of the last time I went skiing. Robert! <laughs> <laughs> what, is that gonna you guys? Blowing? Long haul ice road paranormal ghost truckers? Yeah! I mean, I love that show. Oh. It's the best, especially that episode with Cal Hyde's full of the keys and flimmy talents are breaking in. Bringing in an ancient cursed iron and sending the spirit after him? Yeah, it's such a crowd of related devil division. I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I do enjoy that show. That and more documentaries. All right, Daisy found us a couple of bugs. They're gonna make a great meal. Lots of protein. Gonna keep us from starving out here in this harshly icy wasteland. But that's a whole lot of table fluid over there. Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. That's what kids do. Live a little. I'm gonna give Daisy a handful of gummy worms to the snack table. They eat them with a mock disgust. Let's go find Kelly for a fire! Okay, yes! But an extra fire. Because we're playing pretend! Yay. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. Man, I've never seen to get along with anyone so quickly. I guess Amanda just has that sort of way with kids. Oh. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids very so I'm beating him! <laughs> nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teacher says she spends every recess on the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. There it is. I don't worry about her too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age, too. She used to have a habit of crawling at her tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bit people, too. <laughs> oh, wait. Kids, right? Yeah. He had a little bit of Craig in him. Gotta love him. You're cried to by law. I hear that. Oh. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for him. They do seem to go along very well, but the thought of continually hearing about all of Brian's compliments is rough. Yeah, that'd be nice. Oh. Well, I don't really want to take too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. Talk to Joseph and Damien. I start. I spent Joseph chatting with the guy from Dead Gotham Beyond about the girl. I went over the talk about I walked to them. They look like total opposites. So I'm curious, can you walk me through the through why you had your house painted black? Oh wait, 
Where do I even start? The house stays warm in the winter. It provides artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. Yeah. It's definitely an, an interesting choice. Oh. Thank you. I'm very proud of my abode. <laughs> Fine. I was just about. I was just having a conversation with Damien here, and I bet as uh, I can't pronounce that word. Is aesthetic design decisions. Damien guides me up and down with a warm but critical eye. Hmm. How do you do? I don't believe I had the pleasure. I think I saw you in the Dead Gotham Beyond the other day. Damien's face turned bright red. Uh, I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You say I take the goth lifestyle very seriously and be caught in a ruse, but such corruption as Dead Gotham Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no such way for a gentleman to act. Oh, I kind of like this guy. It's okay, man. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to the dead goth and beyond. Hmm. Very good taste in her part. Did she partake in the goth lifestyle? I think for a second. I looked at a man who's hanging out with some sort of the old kids in the neighborhood. What? Oh, you're not over to consider yourself goth! And then I yells back. I wouldn't necessarily tr try to follow one of my specific labels, but I guess if I had to choose, it'd be more more describe myself as a twee hipster with some normal girl leanings. That's a cool though. Uh. Oh, pretty. Oh. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and hey. welcoming. I mean, it walks up to the conversation. House are like the Lost Boys in a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as goth? That it would, my dear. I don't believe we had the pleasure of meeting Damien Bloodmarge as your. Uh, I don't believe Damien Bloodmarge as your service. He's totally a vampire. He can bite my neck anytime. I mean, he's a vampire. He needs blood, or he's gonna die. He's sick, perfect. Damien finished the sentence with a flourish and a bow. Producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. Dude, this guy's freaking awesome. Hmm. Amanda blushes as he turns to Jess with the courtesy. My, do you know how to treat a lady? Hey. Oh my god, they talked. Hello, Amanda. Seemingly out of nowhere, Jess's twin kids appear. Uh, are they speaking in unison? Whoa! Whoa! Uh, hey! Won't you come play with us? Hmm. Ah! Come play with us. Forever. <laughs> Guys, enough with the creepy twin stick. We talked about this. Christian and Chrissy slowly back away. Where do you think you could, they got that from? May pops into the conversation, wine in hand. <laughs> I uh, don't know. I mean, it takes a long sip of the wine. Hmm. I think I might have taped over VeggieTales VH, VHS with the Shanning. Who knows? She takes another sip of her hmm. wine. Where's Krish? Come on. Ugh, come on. Wasn't he with you? Ugh. You had him a moment ago. Uh. I don't like Mary. It's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be right. Tyler's a pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass hey. to me. Hey, my first time to the rodeo. It's my fifth. Come on. I squeeze four little. Sweetheart, would you please do me the favor and find Krish? That would be great. I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> Ugh, okay, Mary. Ah. Okay, jeez. Dude, divorce her. Look at this handsome, sexy piece of t shirt I have. May fish in a wine and one is off. Oh god, it's that piece of shit. Duh! Can we go now? Uh, Lucian, haven't I introduced you to Vanya? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever! Huh. That's no way for a young man to speak to his others. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever! Sir. Lucian bows again. Mr. Christian, I have a veggie burger, sir. Oh. Coming right up, bud. Are you vegetarian? Yep. Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians? They described carnivore, carnivorous types people as blood lappers. Dodd! Hey. That's really interesting, Damien. It just turns to the grill. Just a hand off the tattoo piece out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't know this before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. 
Whoa, is that a tattoo? Nice! <laughs> yep, I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know? That's so cool. Wanna see mine? <gasps> oh! Lucy pulls back some rubber glaciers, revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. Buddy, give me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian. We'll talk about this later. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? Oh, no, I just thought it looks sick. Mm -hmm. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful, though. That network carries weight. Man, Joseph is way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured you passed to pop out the wind with a Bible. I only did before preaching. <laughs> And without further ado, let's work, on, let's work with some magic. Just close his eye, take a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, it sets the patties on the grill, flushing as he flips the spatula in the air, and it's easy, some of the best grill I've ever seen! <laughs> He's thinking this is my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese on our patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, the dads take notice of crowd around children with my mastery technique! Oh. Bro, I didn't know this was fun, but just knows known around here for his grill oh. and shit. He's ungrillable. Dude. Dude, I've been trying to get on this low, but I just can't catch up. Hey, yeah. Let us keep studying. Here's a rare quality about him. Uh. Mustard, we keep talking about this. Can't we just appreciate the artist? Hey. I've never seen him make a mistake. Oh. Okay, they, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. Mm. Please stop! Oh, the show at the party. Boo the glorious display of puns and yeah. That was amazing. All right, guys, the food's ready for. Oh wait. All right, all right, all right, guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. I'm in a grounds. We all grab a food and hang out. Enjoy perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Yeah. I mean, it's so wide, however, it's in the same cul de sac. Oh. Kinda nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community. It totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Oh. We're happy to have you, man. I think you're gonna like this neighborhood oh. a lot. I like you a lot. I mean... Plus Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she t decides to get into this babysitting game, she'll really make a killing. Hey, why don't you add us all on Dadbook? Dadbook? Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes right over my head. Sometimes. Don't wait, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. Unless the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. And then it breaks up a fight between Carmista and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Then I walk back to your place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? I feel like I was at a networking event. You know, my voice is dying. Coke. I'm gonna get LinkedIn out of cases out of this, I just know it. I don't think it's nice that people want to connect with you. You don't think it's nice when people want to Okay. Not with their affection gems of a land box, metaphorically mm. speaking. Well, hey, at least I met some other cool dads, you should hit them up on Dad Book. Maybe I will if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Hmm. And this is where we're gonna end it here because it's been 38 minutes. Thank you guys very much for watching though. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys all in the next video of Dream Daddy where soon we will find our lover because we I think we met all the dads now. It's exciting. Bye-bye!